Good morning, and thank you so much for worshiping with us today here at the Lord's Church of the Harvest. We are still in the series, Carnality and the Spirit of This Age, and this series is in my top five. God has given me so much revelation about my life in this particular series, and I'm sure he's given you revelation as well. If you've missed the last six weeks, I'd advise you to go back and start with week one so that you can have the foundation for where we are today. God is definitely speaking, but are you listening? Make sure that you have all distractions out the way and that you're focused on what it is that God wants to say directly to you. Make sure you have your pen, your pad, and your Bible so that you can hear God clearly and you can take notes. This is going to be a service or a, a message like none other. So make sure that you are here with us with your mind, your body, and your spirit. Be blessed. Hey, everybody, we just invite you to worship with us in this moment and in this time. And we are declaring over your home, over your family, that we're going to see revival. So right where you are, just clap your hands with us. Just celebrate with us and know that he is God and that he is coming to revive you. He's coming to re revive your city. He's coming to revive your church. He is coming to revive us today. So the song says this. It says we're going to see Yes, we're gonna see revival in our days. Yes. Come on, do you believe that? Yes, we're gonna see revival. Oh, we're gonna see revival. We're gonna see revival. Sing in this place. Come on and clap your hands and celebrate. This is our declaration. So let's sing together. Like a fire can be contained. Sing like a fire can be contained. Like the cleansing brought by the rain. Like a mighty wind. Like a mighty wind rushing through. We want to see you move in this room. In this room. We're all gathered. We're all gathered in one accord. Through your spirit and by your word. Through your spirit and by your word, we're all united. We're all united in Jesus' name. We are your dwelling place, so have your way. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, say this with us. Say, we're going to see revival. We're going to see revival. We're going to see revival. Say your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit poured out, falling on sons and daughters. We're gonna see revival in this. Come on, did you catch it yet? Come on and clap your hands where you are. Let's celebrate the name of our God. Let's sing that verse one more time. Like a fire can be contained. Like a fire can. Sing like a cleansing, like the cleansing brought by the rain, like a mighty wind, like a mighty wind rushing. Say we want to see you move. We want to see you say in this, in this room. Sing we're all gathered, we're all gathered in one accord. Through your spirit and by your word. Through your spirit and by your word. Yes, we're all.
we lift a decree to the heavens and we prophesy over your family we're prophesying even over your circumstance over COVID-19 in the midst of this pandemic we are making a declaration and we're pulling on the Spirit of God so I just want to make this declaration in this moment it says open up the windows open up the floodgates pour out your spirit open up the windows open up the floodgates pour it out your spirit say, open up the windows, open up the floodgates, pour out. Come on, say your spirit. Your spirit, open up the windows, open up the floodgates, pour out. Come on, say your spirit. Your spirit, open up the windows, open up the floodgates, pour out. and peace Lord's Church of the Harvest family so good to be with you this morning I pray you are prepared for an awesome life change and encounter with God listen we are so blessed by God he kisses us with his goodness he kisses us with his favor uh, we are a spoiled people we are blessed people we are loved people and more importantly we are people uh, who know that the Lord thy God is in the midst of thee so this is good guys he, he's in our midst he's present to save he's present to heal he is present to speak. He is the Lord thy God who's in the midst of us. So can we lift our hands right now and just lift your voice and 
uh, begin to give the Lord some glory, begin to honor him for indeed he inhabits the praises of his people. God, we love you. We love you. We adore you. We lift you. We honor you today. We give you the fruit of our lips today. Oh my God, we're filled with thanksgiving. We're filled uh, with words of honor. We're filled with the words of adoration. God, to you, our spirit kneels. To you, our spirit yields. Father, we are humbled in your presence. We are humbled in your sight before the most holy high God, before he who was and is and is to come. We honor you and we bow even towards you father in these holy moments God with you you are indeed holy you are high you are high sovereign are you God righteous in all of your judgments faithful to us keeper of your word keeper of your promises we glorify you be exalted be glorified be enlarged father above the eloquence of speech father be enlarged father above what we have as an agenda for today be enlarged be magnified oh god be magnified be magnified be magnified in our midst, oh God. Be magnified in our midst. God, your word declares that the Lord goes forth in a mighty shout. So if you would just lift your voice and give the Lord a mighty shout on this morning. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Come on, just lift your voice. Give the Lord a great mighty shout. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. He is worthy of all of that, y'all. And some more. I just want to just greet you by saying Shana Tova to you today. Uh, we are indeed already in our new year, 5781, and God is going to perform some amazing deeds, mighty acts in the midst of his church in the earth. Uh, but a lot of what he's going to do really involves the church. Uh, as I spoke prophetically on Friday night, a lot of what uh, uh, will be uh, noted in this year to come is how the Lord deals with his church, how the Lord Lord uses the church as a weapon in his hand. So I'm blessed just to be in this new year with you. Um, and let's go to the word quickly. I want to just speak a word into uh, your, your, your ear and your spirit into your heart. I believe it's directly from heaven today. We've been blessed in this series. Uh, carnality and the spirit of this age has very, been very insightful, uh, very prophetic. God has been really speaking to us about the posture and position of the church and what the future church even will look like. Uh, but, but more specifically, he's brought great clarity uh, to this next leg of warfare. Uh, we are in a truth war, guys, a truth war, a fight uh, to keep the boundary stones in place. The book of Proverbs speaks about that. Uh, it, it's a warning against those who move the boundary stones of their fathers. And I believe that there is a spirit that's in the earth right now that wants to move the boundary stones of truth so that we can define uh, by our own reasoning and by our own intellect what truth is. We can rebrand truth, make truth subject uh, objective, rather than submitting to it as subjective. So uh, we are in a truth war and we're going to have to choose a side as the people of God. Uh, and, and I want to continue this series so I can just kind of open your eyes and just give you some directions and some instructions and even some tools on how to contend in this post-truth era. Uh, by way of a quick recap, quick snapshot, I won't do a extended recap, but I just want to highlight just two points from our last week's teaching. Number one is the word called orthodoxy. Orthodoxy or the word orthodox. It means correct belief uh, or it means right way of thinking. Correct belief or the right way of thinking. I mentioned this word on last week because I really believe prophetically that God wants to put the head on the head on the church or straighten the head of the church. He wants us to bring a sobriety, if you will, to uh, the way we think about things. He's setting our head on straight. Not that he who is Christ needs to be set straight on the church. No, he is fixing his position. However, our thinking, our belief systems need to be adjusted. So he's getting our head together. He's getting our mind together. He's getting our belief systems together. He's getting our attitudes together. He's challenging us in the area of our convictions. He's shoring up our foundations. He's getting our head 
on straight. So uh, with that being said, he's returning us back to orthodoxy, the right way of thinking, the right way of believing. The word says that there is a way that seemeth right unto man, meaning man has his own way of what he thinks is right, but it says the end thereof is destruction. So he wants us to not lean upon the way we think or the path that we think is right or our own beliefs uh, that derive from our preferences, but he wants us to trust him, follow him. And last week we even talked about what that really means. It means letting him be our Lord, letting him be our Lord in the middle of uh, a, a rising, I call it the middle of the rising because I really, we, we haven't seen the, four, the full uh, uh, expression of post-truth era, but in the middle of a rising of a post-truth agenda and era, uh, 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 we're going to have to learn how to submit to him as our Lord. We got to choose a side. Why? Because post-truth mindset basically says this, I know what truth is, but in the presence of my preferences, I much rather subordinate truth to my preferences. I rather choose my preferences over what I know is true. We walked through the book of Judah a bit, uh, the first couple of verses, and we talked about uh, uh, Jude's writings of the church, and he says that there will be men who will creep in, who will further a post-truth agenda, perverting the grace of God, and ultimately perverting and twisting uh, the image of Jesus Christ himself, which is personified truth. Uh, that's just a quick recap. If you need those teachings, please grab uh, last week and the week before last, all right? Right? So Jude makes us very aware of this agenda and how there will be men who creep into the church uh, unaware to further a post-truth agenda. He even goes further and he talks about how these men in verse four are, are, are ordained and have been commissioned to move the church into lawlessness. Remember now, this letter is to the church. It's not necessarily to the world. So, so oh, here we go again. Once again, guys, once again, what God's doing in 5781 is really about the church. It's really about the church. I cannot say that enough. It's really about the church. While you think it's about politics, uh, uh, no, 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 no. It's about the church. All right. So once again, God is trying to uh, assure up the church so that we don't backslide or slide down the slope of lawlessness, uh, which has been introduced by those who propagate this teaching of lawlessness, a perversion of grace, a twisting of or distorting of the image of Christ Jesus, which ultimately, again, is post-truth. We much have our own, much rather have our own preferences. We much rather be a law unto ourselves. We much rather do things our way rather than submitting to the Lordship of of Jesus Christ. So we want to be very careful, guys. Give very close attention to uh, what the Lord is saying in this season so that we don't slide into lawlessness. To enter into lawlessness, let's begin the message, is to exit or to reject the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I'm going to say that again. To enter into lawlessness is to reject or exit the Lordship of Jesus Christ, meaning I no longer want him to be my Lord. I no longer want to submit to his law, his rulership, all of these things. And I believe that uh, that, that exit uh, uh, really sits on a misunderstanding of Lord or the Hebrew word Lord or Lordship or the principle of Lordship. Let me just park there for a second because I think this is important for the future of this message today, uh, for where this message is going. So the word Lord is Adon or Adon in the Hebrew. Now, Adonai means Lord, but watch this. Lord does not simply mean one who rules. Hang with this, but it also means one, it means one who provides and protects those who are under his charge. I'm going to say that one more time. It means one who does not simply rule, but it means one who provides and protects those who are under his charge, which means to submit to God, Jesus Christ, as our Savior. It does not just mean that we submit to his rule, but we submit to his protection. Uh-oh. And we submit to his provision. Now, let, let me say this, because I think this is going to cause some light bulbs to come on in your head for, uh, for about maybe 10 minutes. Uh, uh, the Lordship of Jesus Christ is a Lordship that, that bequeaths or releases his will or his heart to us, his law to us. He writes that on our hearts, but it is 
for our protection. I'm going to say it again. It is for our protection. Meaning anything that the Lord Jesus Christ releases by way of his instruction, his rule, his law. Ultimately, it's not to hurt you, but it's all, it's to protect you. I'm going to say it again. It is to protect you. That within the confines of his rulership, within the parameters of his lordship, there is protection. Oh, let me say it again. There is protection. It's just like your mother telling you uh, 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 whatever your name is do not go downstairs and touch the hot oven do not touch the hot oven that was an instruction that was a directive that was given to you as a law do not touch the hot oven now if you touch the hot oven we guys know the results of it your your hand will be burned uh we may have to take you to the hospital depending on depending upon the degree of burns all of those things will occur uh, as a consequence of you not listening to the law so when god sets a law in place as lord and as master it is for your protection oh my god i gotta say that one time again i gotta say it again because i i think uh, uh, the lordship of jesus christ the, the principle of lordship has been a principle that we shy away from because ultimately when we think of lordship we think of control we think of spoiling of fun no 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 the the rulership of god ultimately is for your protection here's a thing that we have to admit about god that he is all seeing and he is omniscient, he's all-knowing, which means he, he knows more than you do. He sees more than you do. So, so behind the door of temptation, behind the door of lawlessness, he knows that there is something that's very destructive to you. So to protect you, he sets up the fence called his law, his precepts, his ordinances, uh, 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 the, what is right. He sets it up to protect you and within also the pasture of protection. There is also provision. Oh, y'all. All this is under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So watch this, y'all. So to say that he is my Savior and Lord, it means that he does not just deliver me from the power of sin. He does not just ransom me from being a slave to sin, but he's also my Lord that instructs me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Preach, 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 preacher. But he also provides these things for the purpose of me being being protected and provided for. Listen, I cannot say I want his protection and his provision, but not submit to his lordship because all of that is under his lordship. He does not just save me, but he provides for me. He does not just save me and provide for me, but he protects me because all of that is a part of him being savior and lord. Hallelujah. So he speaks these instructions for your benefit. He speaks these instructions, these commandments, these laws for for your protection and for your benefit hallelujah so uh, uh so, so that, that that's a snapshot of the principle of lordship uh, my god so when you say that you are my lord that means that you you don't just call the shots but but you are responsible for my provision and you are also my god i feel the anointing and you're responsible for my protection it's not up to me ah i don't provide for myself you don't leave it up to me to protect myself you are my savior and my lord you're just not the ransom one the one that ransoms but you are also the one that keeps you are my keeper and my savior you are both my deliverer and my protector all that is under him being your savior and being your lord now hear me hear me saints hear me because th this this is where it's going to get interesting uh, under his lordship, under his wings, that's what David said, I, I, I will abide or I can abide. I can, be, uh, I can be free and covered under the umbrella of his lordship. Why? Because according to the definition of Lord, once again, it's provision and protection under uh, under his charge, under his charge. Angels, uh, I'm trying not to go here, y'all. Hey, I got a few moments. Angels coming to your assistance for protection. It's a part of uh, 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 it's a part of uh, being under his charge. The angels are under his charge. You're under his charge. All that's a part of him being Lord over you and over your life. So keep going with this. Second, Second Corinthians uh, three verse 17 watch this let's connect some dots here 
Because I talked about uh, uh, post-truth and the, 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 the self-law agenda uh, will, will desire to stand on the principle of freedom, right? Remember that? Freedom. I talked about this. Uh, those of you who've kind of been watching the news lately, you, you have seen this played out. I gave a prophetic word to Lord Church of the Harvest probably two years ago about how perversion will increase, um, how there are laws that are literally sitting on the desk of judges and those who have the power to make decisions and these these laws are in favor of those who desire uh, to marry kids and to exploit children guys this has been in the workings for a long time and now you see the celebration of pedophilia you see the celebration of post-truth come on here it is the celebrating of celebration of artistic freedom because that's going to be the word too artistic freedom you saw that in this next this uh, Netflix movie uh uh, 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 called cuties uh, go, those of you who don't know go ahead google it right now it is a example or it is a uh, 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 it, it is a foreshadow rather of what is going to manifest in our land you have 11 year old girls uh, 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 shaking and gyrating and uh, 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 the movie is full of sexual content and uh, screenshots and images of young girls backside in their female area all of this is sexual celebrated under the umbrella of freedom you didn't hear what i just said under the umbrella of freedom under the umbrella of self-law under the umbrella of my right to express myself so so watch this here's why last week i said to you that freedom only operates where there is truth you have to have truth and, and we can tie truth in with lordship meaning that you you that there is no freedom without his lordship come on yeah yeah freedom only operates in the parameters of his lordship so those who cry out for freedom those who cry out for artistic freedom only uh, oh my god if, if it's not in the confab, confines of his lordship it runs the risk of becoming something that is lawless and that is something that is totally against what the gospel teaches and what is against our fundamental values our fundamental morals as a society are you hearing what i'm saying to you today so all of this once again that we get ready to see is under the umbrella of freedom but freedom again let me say it again only works where there is truth and lordship freedom only works i'm gonna show this to you in the word of god second corinthians uh, verse 17 I, and, and i didn't get this until i finished my message on last week it was like Oh my God, the Lord hit me right in my bedroom and said, Jonathan, here it is. 2 Corinthians 3, 17, it says, for God is a spirit. Watch it, y'all. And where the spirit of Adonai or the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. Uh-oh. There is, li let's say it again. Let's read it again. 2 Corinthians 3, 17, we know what this says. It says, for God is a spirit. He is a spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and freedom. So watch this, y'all. We see in the presence of the Lord, the presence of the master, the one who uh, releases rules, the one who provides and protects, there is freedom and liberty. That is in the proximity of his lordship so that we cannot have freedom without his lordship. My God almighty. That's part of the reason why, and I don't want to go into this because um, it's some murky areas you know with the founding of our country can't go into that too far but but within the founding of our country uh it was said it was believed i'll leave it as that it was said and believed that the our country was established on biblical principles it was established on his lordship and one of the reasons why the united states was established was for the purpose of freedom and liberty so here we go again you see the lordship of jesus christ alongside of the principle of freedom and liberty that's 2 Corinthians 3 17 so within his lordship there is truth uh, now, now, now this is interesting because uh, 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 the reason why truth is really under attack once again because lordship is under attack him being our master again is under attack all of that is under attack so here's why people don't like Jesus they don't like Jesus because Jesus is Lord <laughs> Jesus is Adonai he is master so that's that's why they have an issue with Jesus they have an issue with anything that Jesus says because he represents lordship he represents the master he represents the one that calls the shots the one that rules so so Christ 
and the principles of Christ and Christ himself go under great attack. So we see that in Jude of the fourth chapter again that there is a twisting of the image of Jesus Christ. Because if we can distort who Jesus Christ is, then we can ultimately twist the truth. So this is the attack. This is the attack, saints. I hope you're taking notes today. This is the attack. So, so let me show you how this attack ends though. Because I gotta, I, I gotta tell you how it ends while we're in the beginning of it. <laughs> Philippians 2 and 10 says, Philippians 2 and 2 and 10 says, it says, for at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and earth above the heavens, uh, below the heavens, and the professional, the confession will be, watch it, y'all, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Ain't that something, y'all? So, so, oh, man, I can't do this today. <laughs> so, so, so watch this, y'all. So, so although there's an attack against truth, an attack against his lordship, the spirit of lawlessness has been released into the land. The end of the story, and I think it's there for a reason, the end of the story is that everybody that challenged Christ, who is the truth, everyone that challenged the truth and the lordship of Jesus Christ, at the end will have to bow their knee and confess that he is Lord. Oh, somebody shout right now that he is Lord. <laughs> Come on, shout again. He is Lord. Oh, I hope I don't run out of time today. Uh, so, so watch this. So watch this. So, so there is an agenda again. Here we go. Against truth. Against Christ. There is an attack. Put this in your notes. Against uh, 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 the, the, uh, the mastery or the, the lordship of Jesus Christ. Because to admit, to admit that there is a Lord means that there is truth and that there are laws that I have to submit myself to. To remove his lordship, to remove him as uh, as master and Adonai means that that laws are up to my interpretation, that truth is up to my interpretation. So we have to move him off the shelf as Lord. Now, listen to what I'm going to read to you. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter. And I want to show you how uh, th this agenda again is to really move the church away from his lordship watch this second timothy chapter four i'm not gonna get through all this today i, I can already tell second Timothy in chapter four uh let's read what paul writes to timothy in his final letter to timothy meaning that these are uh, uh paul's final thoughts hear me these are paul's final thoughts to his mentee timothy now i think this is interesting to note that, that in the last moments of Paul's life, remember now, Timothy was his right hand. Timothy was one of the ones that came to see about him uh, when he was in prison amongst all of those who he ministered to. Timothy was very dear to uh, Paul. Uh, 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 Paul actually uh, circumcised Timothy. That's, you know, that just shows you the degree of their relationship. So, so in his final moments right into Timothy, uh, he writes to him, he says, I charge you, in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, I'm in 2 Timothy 4, who is to judge the living and the dead and by in light of his coming in his kingdom, herald and preach the word, herald and preach the truth, herald and preach the truth, declare the truth. He says, as a matter of fact, he says, keep your sense of urgency. Stand by and be at hand and ready. Whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable, whether it is convenient or inconvenient, whether it is welcome or unwelcome. He says, you as a preacher of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong. Uh-oh, here we go. Or, 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 or the fact that you need to get your head on straight. Watch this. And convince them rebuking and correcting and warning and urging and encouraging them, um, being unflagging and inexhaustible in practice and teaching. Now, I think this is uh, uh, beautiful because uh, the Apostle Paul is charging him and reminding him of his duties to be a proclaimer of truth. Oh, it's going to get hard in a second. Uh, he, he's saying this to him because here's what Paul knows. 
as our Lord is under attack, as his truth is under attack, as his word is under attack, as his law is under attack, so will those uh -huh, who stand and declare his truth. He's saying, Timothy, you're going to have to proclaim it, whether it's welcomed or unwelcome. I need to say this to you because, guys, it's about to get hard for the preacher. Oh, God. It's about to get difficult for the proclaimer of truth. Watch with this, y'all. Watch this. Noah is called in 1 Peter the preacher of righteousness. He's a preacher of righteousness. He's a proclaimer of righteousness. We know the flood story, guys. The only ones that actually listened to him was no one except his family. They were the only ones that listened. Everyone else did not listen to the preacher of righteousness. Good Jesus. Guys, uh, okay. So, 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 so here's what that says to me. Here's what that says to me. Here's what that says to me, that, that even as in the days of Noah, because Jesus said that, Jesus said that the, the last days shall be as the days of Noah, that there is, uh, uh, the, the last the end times or the times that we are in will be comparable to the days of Noah. Uh, one of the highlights in the days of Noah was not just the drinking, uh, uh, the, the lawlessness, the lasciviousness, but, but uh, a rejection of the proclamation of righteousness or a rejection of of preachers that tell the truth. Oh God. Or rejection of preachers that stand for the word of God. Oh God. Listen, listen to me. It, 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 I know in days past, in, <clears throat> in the last epoch, the last era, uh, post pandemic, uh, to be a preacher was a flashy thing. Come on. Uh, to be a preacher was something that we celebrated because people could look at us and listen to us and follow us and, and to a degree do what we say and we could we, we could ride on our high chariots and uh, uh, stand in the pulpit and, and wear our wonderful robes and do all these things that bring us glory. But let me tell you, in the last days, in these days, uh, 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 in these last days, in these times, uh, I'm sorry, well, yeah, yeah, post-pandemic, pre-pandemic, we, we, we can do some of that silly stuff, but post pandemic it's going to be hard for the preacher oh god it's going to be hard for the preacher and paul was telling timothy listen timothy i know how hard it's going to get because it was hard for me i was beat I was shipwrecked. I was thrown in prison. I met all types of opposition. I was left for dead because of my stand for righteousness. My God, this is exactly what Jesus said to his disciples. They will hate you because they hated me. And it's going to get so difficult, I'm going to tell you, for the preacher that there will be pressure on the preacher to back down from his position. So what the Apostle Paul is saying is, hold your ground, preacher. Hold your ground. I don't know what pastor logged on today. I don't know what five-fold ministry gift logged on today. But let me tell you, as a prophet of God, as an apostle of the church of Jesus Christ, you're going to have to hold your ground in this season. They will try to muzzle you. They will try to silence you. They will try to blackball you. Come on. They'll tell lies against you. They'll twist stories. Yeah, they'll lie and say that you tried the Lord over them by preaching the truth. The devil is a liar, preacher. Listen, hold your head up. Don't you be silenced. Don't you be mute. Don't you go into the cave because there are those who are listening for a sound of righteousness. The shofar is being blown and it is the sound of the Lord to a people who are ready to rally, a people who are waiting for the return of Jesus Christ, for people who are mobilize until the king of kings come they are looking for you preacher woe unto me if i don't preach the gospel ah god help me get through this part woe unto me if i don't preach it i uh, i was created to declare it uh, yeah, yeah. And, and let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this. Uh, uh, when I say preacher, I'm not talking about a five-fold ascension uh, uh, ministry. I'm talking about all of us who are able ministers. We have been deputized. We've been ordained to proclaim the truth in a culture that is post-truth. Come on, y'all. Come on. You got to rise up and put on your preacher clothes because God needs you to be the light and declare his truth as the world gets dark. 
Glory to God. Verse 3, he tells us, he says, For the time is coming when people will not tolerate, in the Greek this word means healthy doctrine. Mm. That, 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 that mean, meaning that they won't, they, they won't, they, they, uh, there'll be such an intolerance to what is good for them. Mm -hmm. There'll be such an intolerance. He, 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 here's my fear. Here's my fear. That, that while we look at this text and we think it's something that is coming, it is already here. You have a generation that does not have the stomach for truth and the word of God. We have a generation that, that rejects anything that goes against their preferences. It's a post-truth society that rejects healthy doctrine. Doctrine means teaching or instruction. They reject anything that is healthy to them. Remember I told you, and let's just back up just for a second. I, I'm not going to try to rush through this. Remember I, I told you, I told you, I told you that, uh, I told you that uh, 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 postmodernism uh, uh, was an attack against foundations. It was an attack against foundations, more specifically the truth, by suggesting that there is no truth. Uh, so, so there's a generation that is still dealing with uh, the, the effects of the post-truth movement, uh, which questions any absolute. So to come to them and preach an absolute uh, means that they will. Some of them won't even stomach it. They'll they'll throw it back up because to them it, it's 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 something that that does not fit what is culturally accepted at the moment. Mm -hmm. See, see, this is the other word that that, that we're getting ready to hear a lot: of cultural acceptance, which means does the culture accept this? D does this truth uh, fit within the culture? You know, does, is this truth even relevant to the culture and the times that we live in? But can I tell you what the word of the Lord says? It says his truth endures to all generations, which means that, that the truth of the Lord is timeless. That, that, that just because it's 2020 does not mean the truth that was spoken in the time of Jesus, that it's not relevant for the time that we live in today. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So he, he says that, that they won't endure healthy teaching. They won't endure sound and wholesome instruction. But watch this, guys. This is where I want to hang my hat today. But they will have itching ears. They will have itching ears. The word is kanithamai. Kanithamai. It means an itch that has to be scratched. It's an itch that has to be scratched. Uh, uh, how many of you have ever had uh, uh, itching of your ear? You know, uh, sometimes it's due to allergies. It's due uh, to an ear infection. Whole another message. Ear infection. It could be due to a buildup of wax. Um, it could be due to poor hygiene. And, and you just feel like, you know, that it, it bothers you all day long. It's like this that this nagging itch that wherever you go, you don't, you know, I, I, I got to get it. Even if you get, cause sometimes I do it. I, I get a, I get a pencil in, forgive me. I get a, I get something, whatever I can find, whatever I can find, <laughs> stick in my ear to, to get that, that itch, right? Because that, that itch won't allow you to rest. My God, it won't allow you to rush. You got to do something about the itch. The apostle Paul is saying that they, that those who have itching is will just be like those who have a natural itch in their ear they have to find anything and everything to scratch the itch here's what this means this is also metaphorical it means that these individuals uh, will have preferences uh, that require the condoning of some type of person who's in authority or some type of person uh, that, that has some sort of scholarship achievements or scholastic achievements, which means that they're going to look for someone to agree with their itch, their preferences. They're going to look for someone who condones what they've been feeling. Uh huh. Someone to sign off on the question that they had if the truth of God's word is relevant for now. They're going to look for someone who will argue against scripture. Uh, uh, they will look for someone who support uh, strongly their preferences. There it is again, their preferences. This is who they're going to look for. So, so, so notice the word now uh, in the Greek, it says, and they will gather to themselves, or this word heap in the King James Version, it, it's the word episorio, which actually means to a 
accumulate or to stack. So watch this. I'm giving you this for a reason. So, so, so because there is a, ear, a itch in the ear that needs to be scratched, because they're looking for someone to agree and with and condone their preferences, they're looking for someone that will give them a license mm -hmm, to stay carnal. Now, he's talking to the church again. And because they're going to look for this, they are going to Episorio, they are going to accumulate, or the visual for this word means to stack. Listen, guys, meaning that they are they're going to look for a, 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 a collage or a multiplicity of those who agree with what they've been feeling and what they prefer. As I said to you on last week, for every preference, there is a teacher to teach it agree with it and teach it as if it's true for every preference there is a teacher there for every sin there's an instructor God, the enemy has it set that way so 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 you can intellectually reason uh, 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 against the truth of God's word or even reason or have a reason to support your preferences meaning that it will make sense to you y'all God. Now, now this is dangerous. This is so dangerous because it, it takes skill. I believe it's a, a, a demonic skill to twist the word of God and preach it as if it is truth. Now, this is something. Just hang with me. Hang with me. This is just hang with me. Uh, the, the, these men who will teach these, uh, 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 these, these teach teach messages that condone preferences of those who know a bit of God's word, who will teach it and pervert it and mix it and add to it. I showed you this uh, uh, in Luke, the fourth chapter, when Lucifer was tempting Jesus. He said, if you be the son of God, throw yourself off of this high place. Uh, uh, for indeed, he quoted Psalm 91, but he will give his angels charge over you, lest you dash your foot against the stone. See, he quoted the word of God. He twisted it, manipulated it, but he did not quote the rest of the chapter, which talk, talks about, and he will trample on the lion and the serpent, right? The serpent means Satan. So here we go, Satan, the royal lion. So he didn't teach that part, but he taught the part that, 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 he, that he felt would have fit the flesh side of Jesus. Are you seeing this? So, th so that's how the enemy twisted, perverted, twisted scripture so that it could fit or possibly fit a carnal preference. So we see this. They will heap up teachers who will agree with them. The Lord said this to me. He says, your amount of teachers or the amount of teachers that are stacked are, are, are at the degree of the, con the, the, the at the degree of the word that the convict, I'm sorry, of the, at the degree of the conviction the word brings. Let me say it again. The amount of teachers that you stack or that they will stack will be at the degree of conviction, at the degree of conviction that comes with the truth of the word of God, which means because that the, the, the Holy Spirit convicts, that thing is convicting, that truth is convicting against your preferences. It irritates your preferences. So because that irritating power is so intense, they have to stack up teachers to dull the voice of the Holy Spirit who's in their lives to lead them into truth. So it's almost as if I want to get as many teachers and as many people to agree with me to silence and to win the argument against what the Holy Spirit has already said is true. Woo! It's like in their mind they think that, that there are 50 teachers and there's 60 teachers can undo and untie and win the argument against Holy Spirit. The devil is a liar. Now, how, how will these teachers introduce this, this itching ear message? And hear me, I, I'm not really too concerned um, at this point um, with the, the kind of itching ear. Because we, 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 what we've taught itching ear message is, is pretty much, you know, hyper prosperity hyper grace um you know and, and that and not now mind you those things i believe really take us away from the biblical truths but for me those teachings pale in comparison to what i really feel like 
uh, the enemy is about to fire into the church. Here's what I mean by that. There, there's a word called pluralism. Pluralism. Leslie Newbegin wrote a word, Newbegin, he wrote a book on uh, uh, the gospel of pluralistic society. It's a really good book. Check it out. Um, uh, just, just kind of a, a nugget for you. Pluralism is the acceptance of a variety of truths. An acceptance of a variety of truths. Um, plurality in the context of religion is acceptance of multiple gods, multiple ways to God. It is, it is, you can have pretty much all of them. And, 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 and we, we won't kick up any dust because at the end of the day, uh, we believe that no one has the absolute truths, but uh, 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 every religious group has a degree of truth. And we need to bring all that truth together. You can pick some of this, 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 and we can create an entire collage of truths. And it, therein we will find our way to God. We'll have an understanding of who God is. Now, guys, th this is dangerous. This is dangerous because uh, in so many words, what you're saying is that, again, that, that Christ is not enough. Remember, I, I started off by teaching in this series that Christ is truth personified. He is truth personified. He is the way and the truth. So, so I, I don't need to shop around for truth. Come on. I, I don't need to create uh, many ways and avenues to get to God when he said he is the way. I don't need any other prescription of truth when I have truth personified in Jesus Christ. That's why I raised the question. That's why I raised the question. I raised the question, is Christ enough? I, I asked that question because, listen guys, this pluralistic uh, movement, this mindset will convince you that Christ isn't enough. That you can have Christ and have everything else. You can have a little bit of Hinduism, a little bit of Buddhism. You can be a five percenter. You can be a Wiccan. You can be a, a part of the new age movement. You can take on all of these types of philosophies, teachings, uh, 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 these, these pseudo truths and, and mix it all together. And you can live your life, uh, in accordance to all of these truths, guys, this is dangerous. This is dangerous because what this ultimately leads to is it leads to what is called pantheism, pantheism. Now, what is pantheism? Hang with me, guys, because this is going to be important. Pantheism, pan means pan, which pantheism, well, it's two words in the Greek. Uh, pan means all. Uh, theos or means God. So it means all gods. It means all gods. That I could have all of them. It's, it's the agenda of the coexist movement. It is... Uh, 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 it, it is the agenda of the coexist. I'm trying to go far with this. The agenda of the coexist movement. Why, why is this the agenda? This is the agenda because to have a pantheon or to have a pan or to ascribe to pantheonism or to have a coexist movement, it means that I'm going to have to watch this. I'm going to have to silence a truth that may ruffle the feathers of another movement that I'm attempting to coexist with. Because what if, what if in the Bible that, that it, it tells me to come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, Lord Jesus. I, I, I can't coexist with scripture like that. It says, what, what fellowship does light have with darkness? I, 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 I can't. I can't subscribe to coexist in a pantheon and, 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 and say that I'm a Christian and a believer because, because the word tells me I have to come out. I have to be separate. There must be a, 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 a mark of light that, is, that is, is obvious that I can see and determine the difference between light and darkness. So, so guys, here we go again. This, this agenda of pantheonism, this pantheon movement is this pluralistic movement is to cause the believer to bring all of their gods put all of their gods next to God or Jehovah God and say I want all of you to get along but the last time I checked the last time I checked, the the the, the, the when 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 uh, uh, the Ark of the Covenant or the presence of God was placed in the tent next to Dagon, God said, "I can't. I won't have any other god beside me. I will be the only god. I don't care who it is, what it is." The last time I checked, guys, the Bible declares they came back to check on the Ark and they found Dagon 
They found Dagon. Dagon's head was cut off. His hands were cut off. He had fallen over because at the end of the day, God says in Isaiah 45, verse 5, I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. He says, I equip you though you don't know me, which means, guess what? Uh, in the presence of all of your gods that, that you're trying to make as God, I am the one that stands above the rest and I will not tolerate the presence of any other God. My name is jealous. Can I say something? I got to end the message right here. I got, I got two minutes. Uh, can I say something right now? That for those of you who have subscribed to pantheism, I know you said that I did not pick up uh, the teachings of Hindu. I know you said, of apostle, I didn't subscribe to COS. I'm not a wicked, but, but when I take pieces of truth that are foreign to the word of God and I mix it and I put it in a bowl and a cup and I drank from it and I can, and, and I can say, I can comfortably say that it's okay for me to have the truth of God's word and that truth and everything will be all right. Can I tell you that God is so jealous that he is going to make a holy war against the truths that you've held on to, the gods that you have erected next to him get ready saints of God because we're about to see idols come down come on we're about to see a war won against the plethora and the pantheon and this array of other gods and above all of them God will stand supreme and he will reveal that all of these gods are nothing more than the works of men's hands it's the truth that derived from you in them there is no value can I tell you, it's time to wage war. God is coming as a righteous judge. He's coming as a jealous God. And he is shouting, no other God, no other God, no other God, no other God. And the sound of his voice is releasing vibrations into the heart of believer, causing us to question what gods have we set up. For those of you who are picking and choosing, I can have this and have this and have this and have this. I pray that God humbles your heart. He convicts you to the point that you say no other God but you, God. No other God but Jehovah. I have decided to make you master and you master alone. I won't depend upon what Hinduism says, Buddhism says, age of enlightenment, new age. I, I, I won't borrow. It, it, it won't be a pick and pick and choose and stack my plate high type of thing. No, I clear my plate to have your truth. To have your opinion. Because at the end of the day, there's no other God but you. God bless you. Part two next week. Tune in. See, I told you this was going to be an awesome message. I believe that every time you encounter the word of God, it's a moment that you can make a decision. Some of us have already made the decision to choose Jesus, but then there are some of us who are still straddling the fence. There's some of us who haven't even had the invitation or know who Jesus is. So I want to offer you the greatest gift that you will ever receive. Romans 10 and 9 says, If you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, then you will be saved. If you need further information on how to do this, or if you want to choose Jesus today, you can contact Elder Brandon Bennett. His number is on the screen, and he can walk you through the entire process of choosing Jesus today. I promise you, it's going to be the greatest decision of your life. Along with choosing Jesus, I believe that it's so important to be in a community with people who love God, people who are committed to walking alongside other believers to make sure that they are in alignment with what it is that God has for their life. If you do not have a church family or a church home and you want to partner with the Lord Church of the Harvest today, I want to extend that invitation to you as well. You can contact our Deacon Lisa Allen at the number provided on the screen and she will walk you through joining and being a part of this awesome family of believers. I believe there's another important part of worship and that is worship through giving. God gives seed to the sower and I believe that LCH is fertile ground if you want to sow today. Not only are we fertile physically, but we're fertile spiritually in this particular house. So please know that anything that you sow into this fertile ground will reap you a harvest. We have no lack in the pandemic. 
God has supplied all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And we are so grateful to God that he has given us seed to be able to sow in this season. So please make sure that you sow into this fertile ground if God puts it on your heart. Tonight at 4 p.m., we are celebrating our Rosh Hashanah Seder. And we're going to have an awesome time and celebration of the year 5781. This is our new year and we are so excited. If you miss Friday night's worship encounter, I'm telling you, you missed it. If you have access to band, go back and listen to the replay. We worship, we praise, we dance, we did a little bit of everything. We declare, we decreed, and we had an awesome time in God. So listen, do not miss tonight at four. Make sure you're there. If you need instructions on the Seder meal, make sure that you log into the band app and that all of that information is provided on that particular screen. This Tuesday, we're going to have an awesome Bible study, which is going to still be on the fear of the Lord by John Bevere. We're still in our fast and consecration season. We're just having some awesome things happening here at the Lord's Church of the Harvest, and we do not want you to miss out on anything. If you do not have any of the information or you're not receiving any of the information, please make sure that you text. 443-720-7803. Make sure that you type in LCH member and then you will be on our mailing list and you'll begin to receive all of the information from our ministry. I want to thank you again so much for joining us today here at the Lord's Church of the Harvest. We are signing off. We pray that you have a blessed and prosperous week and that God shows you a new thing about him this week. Stay in God and stay blessed.